What's going on guys, Hayden back. In a world that revolves around debt, it's harder than ever to build wealth, especially if you have no money to start. Now, borrowing money has become so easy for our generation, not only for us as consumers, but even for our government. You see, on February 1st of 2022, the US Treasury Department reported that the US gross national debt surpassed $30 trillion for the first time, and US consumer debt, which is what we have, totaled more than $15.6 trillion in 2021, a record-breaking increase. Americans now have an average of $9,000 left in their savings than they did last year, and the personal savings rate in America even just hit its lowest level since the Great Recession, and even 56% of Americans can't cover $1,000 in emergency expenses with their savings. With so many different ways to borrow money, it has become increasingly difficult for the average person to build wealth, especially if you really just don't have any to be begin with. Fortunately, though, in today's video, I will be sharing with you some easy wealth building habits you can incorporate into your everyday routine to build wealth. Now, personally, since incorporating these specific habits into my own routine, I've amassed a net worth of over $500,000 at just 24 years old with no debt to my name. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to watch this video until the end so you too can build wealth even with no money. Now, also, I don't want this video to sound cookie cutter in any way, as I'm sure this isn't your first video on wealth building that you've watched. So what I want to do is break down my ways that worked for me to build wealth, and hopefully it will help you achieve your goal. So guys, the first step towards building wealth with zero dollars is smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This actually lets me know that you're interested in content like this so that I can continue to make more videos, and it also helps YouTube push my content further so people like you can continue to learn about building wealth. Now, after smashing the like button, and the second step is paying off debt. In today's society, we live in a spending culture, and it has gotten so out of hand that it has caused inflation to hit a new 40-year high at 8.6%. Inflation has actually gotten so bad that even 23 million Californians will be receiving inflation relief checks of up to $1,050. You see, from an early age, we were taught to go to school, get a job, as well as start a family, but nobody actually taught us how to be financially educated when making these big decisions. Today, this has caused student debt in 2022 to climb to $1.7 trillion, and the average student can have a federal loan of up to $36,510, and if it was a private loan, it could be up to $54,921. Now imagine having 55 k in debt at only 21 years old. Even 20 years after entering school, half of student borrowers actually still owed $20,000 each on outstanding loan balances. Now I'm not saying don't go to college, I'm just saying do your research on grants, scholarships, even community college or a local state college in order to lower the burden of student loans. Now, usually after you graduate, you end up getting a job and then you take a loan on a new car to get to work. It makes sense, right? Now, for me though, I personally saved up my money that I made from YouTube when I was in college, as well as from part-time jobs working at restaurants and was actually able to purchase my first car used and in full to avoid going into debt. Now, people don't realize the average car payment in the U.S. increased year over year by double-digit percentages. The jumps were 11.8% for new vehicles, 18.2% for used vehicles, and 15.4% for leased vehicles, putting average monthly car payments at $644 for new, $488 on used, and $531 on a lease, which is quite difficult to pay, especially after getting out of college. Now, this means not only is the average person paying down his student loan debts, but now he has to worry about a massive monthly car payment, and they think it's okay because everybody else is doing it. Now, a few years go by after working at your job, and you get promoted, which is awesome, but you decide to buy a house and start a family, which is reasonable considering everybody's doing it. Now, when I first graduated, I lived at home to save money, and eventually I got an apartment, which I'm in today, and I pay rent instead of a mortgage because it lets me focus on saving up and investing more of my income instead of having to put that money towards a mortgage and any unexpected problems that come with home ownership, as they always do. And the other thing people don't realize is that owning a house ties you down to wherever you live. Now, I originally lived on Long Island and spent a ton of money on state taxes as a self-employed employee or having my own business. 
but since I rent, I was actually able to uh, pack up my stuff uh, when my lease was over and move to Florida where I can actually spend less on rent, get more space, and even save money because there's no state taxes. Now, owning a house on the other hand would have taken months to prepare and sell if I wanted to move. And I'm not saying a house is a bad thing to own. I'm just saying it's a huge responsibility to take on if your goal is to build wealth fast. The average person will take out a mortgage and open a credit card to furnish this new home. And before you know it, they're paying $3,000 a month in stuff you just don't really need. And you're tied down and things start breaking. You see the country's average mortgage debt is over $215,000 with a monthly payment of $2,071. And the average card holder had $5,934 in credit card debt in quarter four of 2021. This leaves the average person in a mountain of debt fighting to stay ahead of the bills and the never ending amount of compounding interest. Now you see the reason paying off debt is so important is because it frees up your money and allows you to use it as a tool towards building wealth. And I know this might be hard to digest, but going against the grain and doing what isn't normal helps you build that wealth. There's a reason why more people are in debt than there are millionaires. And you need to practice doing what others don't do. Don't go into debt to get the latest car because your friend has it or the newest bag because you saw it on Instagram. Even renting for a few years instead of buying a home when all your friends do can actually pay off tremendously. And if you don't believe me, Dave Ramsey conducted the largest survey of millionaires ever with 10,000 participants and found that most of them did it through consistent investing, avoiding debt like the plague, and smart spending, which means budgeting. Now, by staying out of debt and watching expenses, they're actually able to build their bank accounts instead of trying to get out of a financial hole every single month. This is the exact mindset I had since I was 20 to get to where I am today. Now, I can spend the rest of today's video lecturing you on the importance of paying off debt and how much debt each person has, but I want to lighten the mood with the third step towards building wealth, and that is making money. Making money is the single most important thing you can do to build wealth and build wealth fast. And I know it's easier said than done. Growing an income takes time, but it will eventually pay off tremendously when it is established. And paying off your debt quicker and investing faster will let you build up your net worth faster than ever before. Now, honestly, the best way to do this can still be working a nine to five. And I know I just said that. Usually just not an hourly job, even though there are some exceptions. Now, commission-based jobs like loans, insurance, or even sales will let you earn more income because they aren't capped by an hourly pay. And there are actually plenty of employees making more than $100,000 a year still working for a boss. However, something you have to realize is the average salary for a full-time worker that gets, you know, hourly pay or it's capped at hourly pay is just only $53,490, which, you know, isn't terrible if you learn how to budget, but it is quite restricting. What this ends up doing is it locks you into a fixed income with very little room to grow. Yes, you can work over time, but there's only so many hours in a day that will let you do that. You see, the more energy you put into a salary job, the best you will get is more work and maybe even a good job from your boss if you're lucky. For those that also can't stand to have a boss, uh, the next best thing to do is to start a side hustle. And this goes for people that have jobs currently and that are employed, as well as if you're just trying to start it off on your own. Nearly 5.4 million applications were filed to form new businesses in 2021, the most of any year on record. I started started my other YouTube channel in college as a side hustle and was able to grow it in just two to three years, allowing me to build multiple streams of income and quit my full-time job just a few months after college. Now, keep in mind, I still had a full-time job while I was building my side hustle or my YouTube channel. And once I grew that YouTube channel's income stream higher than what I was making full-time, that's when I decided to quit my full-time job to put more time and effort into the YouTube channel. Now, the income from my YouTube channel wasn't at a fixed hourly rate, so the sky is the limit to my potential. This meant the more time and energy I put in, the more I could potentially earn, unlike working at an hourly job. Starting my own business also let me create multiple streams of income, and it's also the fourth step towards building wealth. This is because if one income stream failed, I had four or five others to fall back on, and this is why it's so important to start that side hustle, even if you have a job. Now, you see, once I had an income established, whether that be from a side hustle, my own business, or a salary, I started investing immediately and budgeted myself. And these are the fifth and six steps. Between eating out, paying for cable and streaming services, even receiving subscription boxes and other unneeded spending, the average American spends $1,497 per month on non-essential items. Now imagine what that could do if you invested $1,500 a month. You see, getting on a budget and reducing your unnecessary expenses will 
will allow you to put more towards investing, and the earlier you invest, the more wealth you can build in the future. Some people even follow the FIRE method, which is a technique for maximum budgeting to invest the most you possibly can, which isn't necessarily something I follow directly because it is a super strict technique to follow, but I do do something similar. Now, honestly, I'm just a cheap person and really don't like to spend money unless I have to, and the biggest expense I have is currently taxes. But all the extra money that I accumulate and earn, I use to max out my Roth IRA or my retirement accounts, which I started at 20 years old and invest in index funds. And the best part about a Roth IRA are the tax-free withdrawals in retirement. The big payoff of this Roth IRA account is that you won't be taxed on withdrawals like traditional IRAs and other retirement plans. And any money I have left over after maxing out that Roth goes into out-of-retirement index funds. The way I see it, I'd rather buy all the unnecessary stuff with the profits from my investments, not my earned income. Experts estimate that 40% of people have experienced a financial loss due to procrastination. And by waiting to invest, you could be missing out on hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in compound interest. Now, the cool thing about investing early is you don't need a lot to start because time is on your side, unlike investing later on in life. This is why having your money work smarter and not harder is a thing. Not only is time your best friend when investing, but you'll also reap the benefits of compound interest, a phenomenon Albert Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world. The great thing about compound interest is even if you never invested another penny, by starting earlier, you'd still come out ahead of someone who chose to begin investing later on in life. In other words, it pays to invest early and often. The longer your money can benefit from the power of compound interest, the bigger your gains will be as time goes on. Now, I don't want my age to be a put off for those older than me for investing, especially if you haven't started yet. The way I look at it is you can't change your past, but you can change your future. And by starting today, you will thank yourself you started a few years down the line. So guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, enjoy the day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.